Hello everyone. Today in this video, I will describe the details of arterial pulse examination in children. There are 11 points in pulse examination. These are, we have to calculate the pulse rate for full 1 minute in radial artery. Then we have to check the rhythm and intensity of the pulse. Then we have to check the volume, tension and character in carotid artery pulse. Then we have to check the vessel wall thickness. Then all peripheral pulses should be palpated. Then we have to check any radio radial delay or radio femoral delay or pulse deficit is there or not. To easily remember all these points, this mnemonic VIP CR tension, very important person, class representative tension, in which the V stands for volume and vessel wall thickness, I for intensity, P for peripheral pulses and pulse deficit, and C for the character, and R for rate, rhythm, radio radial delay and radio femoral delay and the last is tension. Now the first point is pulse rate. So in this picture you can see I am palpating the radial artery by three finger technique. So normal pulse rate is 120 to 160 beat per minute in, in newborn, infant 110 to 140, toddler 100 to 130, preschool age 90 to 120 and school age 80 to 110 and in adolescent 60 to 100 beat per minute. So heart rate and pulse rate decreases with the age. And if you we label the sinus tachycardia when the normal sinus rhythm is there but the rate is high more than 170 in infants and more than 140 in children but it is less than 200 beat per minute. Common causes of sinus tachycardia are exertion, crying, anxiety, high output state, example in anemia, thyrotoxicosis, hypovolemia, hypotension, atropine or nifedipine drug toxicity. We label sinus bradycardia when the normal sinus rhythm is there and rate is less than 80 beat per minute in infant and less than 60 in children. And the common causes of sinus bradycardia are it may be physiological as seen during the sleep and in athletes. It may be pathological as seen in hypoxia, hypothermia, hypothyroidism, in heart block and due to beta blockers and desoxin toxicity. Sinus arrhythmia is the normal and physiological in, in children in which there will be normal sinus rhythm and rate will increase during inspiration and decrease with the expiration. If you find the patient is having abnormal rhythm with the increased heart rate around 300 to 400, then it may be because of atrial flutter or fibrillation or ventricular fibrillation. If you find patient is having abnormal rhythm with the decreased heart rate, then it may be because of block. Now the second point is we have to check the rhythm. Normal rhythm is regular and abnormal is irregular. Irregular again, it may be irregularly irregular or regularly irregular. So the regularly irregular can be seen in atrial tachyarrhythmia with the fixed AV block and in atrial flutter. Irregularly irregular seen in the ectopics atrial fibrillation tachyarrhythmia with the varied AV blocks. Now the uh, third point is we have to check the intensity of the pulse. So there are uh, grading between 0 to 4. Grade 0 when there is a no palpable pulse. Grade 1 faint pulse or grade 2 diminished pulse. Grade 3 normal pulse. Grade 4 bounding pulse. So we have to check the intensity and label according to grading. Now fourth and fifth point is volume and tension for which we prefer the carotid artery pulsation. So we have to mention is it the normal volume pulse or high volume pulse as seen in the high output state example during if, uh, if the patient is having anemia or if the patient is having aortic regurgitation and we have to label low volume pulse if the patient is having the shock and uh, hypotension. So after that sixth point is character of the pulse. So in this picture you can see the up stroke wave is labeled as the percussion wave and downstroke wave label is a tidal wave in which there will be a dichrotic notch. So when there is a abnormal character, example collapsing pulse, water hammer pulse in which there will be large volume pulse with abrupt and rapid upstroke, it will be followed by rapid downstroke and which is seen in the aortic regurgitation PDA and in pulses alterance there will be a stronger and the weaker beat alternatively which is seen in the left ventricular failure. Pulses bispirance in which patient will have the two strong systolic peak separated by mid systolic dip 
an anacrotic pulse in which patient will have the slow rising pulse is seen in the aortic stenosis dicrotic pulse in which two systolic and diastolic peak will be there it it is seen in the sepsis hypovolemia cardiogenic shock so all these are abnormal character now seventh point is we have to check the vessel wall thickness in the radial artery by um, moving the proximal finger around the artery its significance in children is less now eighth point is we have to palpate all peripheral pulses so uh, for the radial artery pulse we use the three finger technique so in this picture you can see so for this we have to keep the forearm slightly pronated wrist should, should be slightly flexed and we have to palpate along the radial volar aspects of the forearm at the wrist with the tip of the three finger index middle and ring finger distal finger is to gently compress the artery and the role of the middle finger is to feel the radial artery pulsation for the rate rhythm intensity and the role of the proximal finger is for the vessel wall thickness so this is for the radial artery pulsation for brachial artery pulsation we have to keep the arm abducted and elbow slightly flexed and we have to palpate over the anterior aspects of the elbow just medial to bicep tendon and lateral to medial epicondyle of humerus so in this picture i am palpating the brachial artery for the uh, palpation of carotid artery medial to sternocleidomastoid we have to palpate for the character volume and tension of the pulse so in this picture you can see i am palpating the carotid artery and all now the site for palpation of femoral artery pulse in this uh, patient should be in supine position and we have to palpate over the midway between iliac crest and pubic ramus with the fingertip so in this video you can see i am palpating the femoral artery now for the palpation of popliteal artery patient should be in supine position knee should be flexed at 120 degree and we have to encircle and support the knee with the both the hand from both the sides and palpate with the supporting fingertip at the popliteal fossa so in this video you can see i am palpating the popliteal artery with the knee in 120 degree angle and with the both hand fingertip now for the palpation of dorsalis pedis artery patient should be in supine position and we have to palpate near the center of long axis of the foot lateral to proximal one third of extensor hallucis tendon so in this video you can see i am palpating the dorsalis pedis artery just lateral to the proximal one third of the extensor hallucis tendon now the palpation of posterior tibial artery Uh, we have to palpate just posterior to medial malleolus at the space between medial malleolus and Achilles tendon above the calcaneus. So, in this uh, picture, you can see I am palpating posterior tibial artery. Now, after that, we have to check any radio radial delay is there or not. So, for this, we have to palpate both radial arteries simultaneously. It is commonly seen in the preductal coarctation of aorta. and after that we have to check any radio femoral delay is there or not so for this we have to palpate the right radial artery and right femoral artery simultaneously it is seen in the post ductal coarctation of aorta radio femoral delay now last is we have to check for the pulse deficit so for this we have to simultaneously auscultate the heart at the apex and also we have to palpate the radial artery so if you find any pulse deficit is there then it may be because of the ectopic or it may be because of the fibrillation so this is all about the arterial pulse examination so these are the 11 points which i have discussed thank you so much